Hi everyone, welcome to the last part of um, our online tutorial about chapter 4 which is about forecasting. Now the exercise that, that we are going to do here, we are going to do it uh, with the train method, actually you call it also the regression method. Now most of uh, the, the, the other exercises that we did were, ma were mainly based uh, with the exponential smoothing, the moving average and so on and so on. Now this is another method that we are taking. That you are going to try to solve and see how it's being used to, to forecast the demand. Now, the example that we have here is about BMW that are selling the popular X6. Now, they've the sell according to the problem here, they are saying that sales of BM's popular excess have grown steadily of auto uh, at auto dealership in Gauteng during the past five years. Now, the table below is given already. Now, the sales manager have predicted before the new model was introduced that the first sales will be for 10 BMWs. Now, using the trend, using the trend projection between bracket the regression method, develop a forecast for the sales of BMW X6 in routing through year six. So, what we are going to do here, they want us to forecast uh, our uh, to make a forecasting of the sales that are supposed to be from year one to year six. That's why the statement is saying through year six. Now, a statement could also be mentioned like we could only mention, we could only make the forecast uh, of year six. In this case here, we should have only forecasted year six. But here, since the statement is talking about through year six, it means that we need to do the forecast from year one, two, three, four, five, till year six. This is how the forecast is supposed to be. Now, how do you go about solving this? Now, with the difference with the other method, the training method, the trend method, this one we use uh, equation, this one, and generally these are the three equations that we need. And this formula, you, you need to know them. We have the first one, which is the Y formula. This is even the main formula that we need to use. And the second one is the A formula, meaning the, uh, this one is the B, sorry. The values that we take here, we're going to replace it in the formula. And the second part is the A formula. So we need to make sure that we find the value of A and B so that we can find the value of Y to help us predict the cell for the other for the other um, part so what happened is like first of all this exercise you always need to solve it using a table and that table will have different headings first of all um the table will look like this i think so look uh, when you look in when you look at the problem you realize that we have the years and after the years we'll have the time period here so we have first of all the years and then here we have the time period the time period will define it as x it's always time period x is always the time period and then y we're gonna have ourselves here which will be y and then we are going to have the value of x square why do we have an x square we have an x square because of our of the problem here in the formula we already have an x square so we need to make sure that we have an x square here too so that it will make our calculation easy and then we would only have to replace into the formula in addition of having the x square you also see that in the formula we have an x times y so we have x y here in the formula actually x y is the sum is the the uh, uh is the multiplication between the time period and the cell this out so this is how these are the values that are supposed to be in the table that we are going to draw but now we need to be able to identify what is x what is y so the years are coming from the table that we have here so the year we have one two three four five six and we need to focus for uh month six so the years we're gonna solve only one two three four five because that's what we have so far so we have year one, two, three, four, and finally year five. Now, the time period, depending on the exercise, we could have said maybe that the year would be 2001. This is just an example, 2001, 2002, 2003, and so on. Now, what we do is like, the time period will always be equal to the number of years that we have. The first one will always be one, two, three, four, five. If we have six, seven, and so on. So even if here we had, for example, uh, year, let's say we would call it year one. And then here we call this year two. Here we call it year three. Uh, the last one we call it year three and so on. So the value that is here is only a nominal value. It means that we could even call it one, two, two, one, two, three, four, and so on. We could even call it A, B, C, D. So this value here 
it only have a value of a nominal value only so it doesn't affect the calculation no matter the name that we give it the most important is the time period the x value so the x value is almost like you count the period that you have one two three four five six seven eight and so on and then the cells are coming from the table that is already here so these are the values of the cells that will copy and paste in our table here like this uh let me check the format um yeah so it like this and then format painter so these are the values of the cell so what we need to do now we need to find the value of x square we need to find the value of x and y now x square is this value here that is square so we we'll, we are going to get one squared which is going to give us uh which is going to give us one is equal to one we do the same thing for two here we'll get two square um yes two square which is going to give us four and so on so what we do is like when i do the same thing for three three square will give us nine four square will give us 16 and five square will give us 25 and this is how you find the x square now you also need to make the sum when you take one plus four plus nine plus 16 plus 14 the sum gives you 55 then next we need to find the x time y x time y is one times 45 is one time four, 450 sorry which gives us 450 we do the same thing for the second one which is two times 495 uh, 495 which gives us 990 and then the other one is three times 5 518 which gives us 1540 1554 then the second one is 22 52 and 29 20 now the values that we get here as a reminder it only means that this one here is 4 minus 5 times 2 this is the value that we get in this uh on this level here is 5 1 8 and times 2 i mean times 3 this is the value that we get and so on and so on then we also make the sum of this column here and the sum gives us 8166 this is the sum of the xy now the other thing that we need to do also need to find the sum of the y here why do we need the sum because we need to find the x bar x bar means that it is the it is i mean y bar this value here is called y bar like you read it y with a bar on top so the reason that we need to find uh now this is the sum the sum will give us um the sum is going to give us two six one ten and the sum on this one here but this one here it's fine we, we can still make a sum which is three plus three which makes six ten fifteen and the sum is fifteen on this one so we got the sum of all these values now what we mean now is for us to find the value of x bar and y bar as we say it x bar where is x bar from here this is x bar so we'll get the value of x bar here and its value and then we do the same thing uh, for y bar now y bar it means that it this is the mean so here we have uh, x bar here so x bar is the sum that we take actually we're gonna do is more like the average so it's gonna be the sum which is 15 the sum that we have here that we divide by um then n which is the number of period actually is 15 divided by n and the value of n in our in our exercise here is 5 why do we call n5 because n is the number of observation that we have one two three four five so n is equal to five that means x would be equal to 15 divided by by five which gives us three we do the same thing for y this is the value of y the sum is two six uh two six ten divided by five which is going to give us five two two now this is the value that we get now the 522 that we get is uh the uh, how do you call it 
the 522 that we are going to get is the x bar i mean y bar itself itself now because we found all the values here we found the x2 we found x y x bar and n bar uh, x bar and y bar so we have all the formula so that means we can find the value of b we can find the value of a and then we replace in the equation now based on the calculation here we have the b and so on and so on this is the formula this formula you need to know it unfortunately so <laughs> you don't have a choice now here we this part here is the sum of x and y the sum of x and y based on our calculation here is 1866 so you just replace on the formula that the sum of L of x and y is a 81 6, 6. and then we multiply by the value of n we say that the value of n was y that we're going to multiply by x bar term y bar now x bar according to the problem is 3 that we multiply by y bar that is 5 to 2 this is how we solve the numerator. The second uh, the denominator is the sum of x squared. The sum of this is the value of x squared. And then the sum of x squared is 55 that we got down here. So down here we'll get uh, 55 minus n. We know that n in this case here is 5. Uh, we know that n is 5. And then we need to multiply by n square, uh, n n bar square. N bar is this one here. I mean, x bar is this one, which is three. And then we square it. It's gonna be three times three between brackets, which is gonna give us nine. Now the value of b according to our calculation is supposed to be to the three comma six. This is the value of b. Now next, what we need to do is like we need to find the value of a. So we have all the values. Why did we start B before A? Because B, uh, because to solve A, we need a value of B. If we don't have the value of B, you cannot find the value of A. So that's why you're always supposed to start from B. Now from the calculation here, we already got X bar, which is 5 to 2. I mean Y bar, which is 5 to 2, minus the value of B, which is 33, 6, times X bar, which is 3. Now, the value that we get, like value of A, is 4 to 1, comma 2. Now, the value that you get, you will always realize that the values uh, that you get will always be, how do you call it, will always be similar to the value of the cells here. Yeah. If, for example, you found the value of B, like this one, the value of cells vary between 500 and 400. We just say that the gap is between 400 and 500. And you get something of... A that is maybe 1000 like this or 2000. There's a mistake with our calculation, and actually, it's not even possible because this value won't make sense. So, unless you find a value of y that is even huge and it might be a problem, but generally, it will be around the same values of the cells. Now, after doing that, what is left is only to make the equation because the equation of y, this is the equation, we just replace the value of a, the value of b, and then with that, we're done. So the value of a according to our calculation is 4 to 1 comma 2 plus the value of b which is 33 comma 6 that we are going to multiply by x actually x now is going to help us to find the forecasting of the other amounts now what we are going to do is like we take the same table we copy it and paste because remember that the question wanted us to find using the trend prediction method develop a forecast for the sale of bmw x6 in our tank for year six so the objective is to find year six but they say that we need to calculate because whatever we have here are not the actual forecast is the sales themselves so we need also to find the forecast so what we do from here is like we, we draw the same table uh, only few things will change um, from the table that we have uh we don't calculate the cells anymore we don't calculate x and y anymore and this one here whatever we are going to do is going to be the forecast forecast now we are going to do the forecast based on the method that we have here and you know already that the method that uh, based on the formula that we have here so this is the formula and x is one that means the forecast of year one here we're gonna calculate the forecast of year six so i'm gonna remove this this is year six in fact this is even what we're looking for 
we can call it year six or depending on the exercise and so on but in this case it's year six so what we do here is like we replace we have this for this is for year one now this is for year one what we do is like we replace x by the value of one in this case here because we're in period one x is going to be one now what we do we replace x by one and then the value that we are going to get from our calculation it um four five four comma eight this is the first value this is the forecast now we do the same thing for uh yet forecast two we copy the equation but the value of x now is going to be two because we are in period two now don't make the mistake as i said if the year here is 20 2001 don't take 2001 and replace here 2001 as i said it's only a nominal value in this case you, you, you you're gonna assume that 2001 the time period is one 2002 is two 2003 and so on you always replace by number don't replace by the year themselves so don't do that mistake now second period we do the same thing but the value is going to be two here and then what we get is going to be 488 comma four this is the forecast of year two we do the same thing for year three but now we're going to replace x by three and then the value that we get is five two two we do the same thing for year four uh x we replace it by four and then the value that we're supposed to get is supposed to be five 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 comma six we do the same thing for year five uh which is replace this one by five and then the values that you get is going to be five eight nine times two and finally for year six which is even what we're looking for we replace by six here which is going to give you six two two comma eight and we're done with the problem but now I, I want to emphasize on something in the way that this exercise we went from year one to year six because the question was saying through year six the question could have say using the trend prediction method develop a forecast for the sale of bmw x6 in routing for year six so we should have gone straight and we we didn't we couldn't have uh, i mean we're not obliged to do from year one to year six and so on in fact uh in summary this is how you solve the trend uh problem as i said the most important thing is these three formulas here after finding the three formulas here what you do is like you make the table whereby you need to define x y x square and x times y by the time you do that you calculate the sum of all the values that will help you to find now the average which is called x bar and y bar and then you solve everything i really 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 want to emphasize on this one because i don't want people to make the mistake that if this one is 2001 the value of x will also be 2001 as i said whatever we have here is a nominal value we could have year one year two year three we could have week one week two week three and so on it doesn't change but x will always be one two three four five six seven depending on the observations that you have this is even what you're gonna do whenever you need to find the table here and so on here you always replace by the value of x which is always gonna be one two three four five six seven depending on the period this is how you solve uh, yeah that it about this uh, tutorial i really hope that it was helpful thank you so much for your time and whenever you have a question you can comment on the page and we'll try our best to answer thank you don't forget to like the page take care and see you next time